welcome to another edition of Booze and Tunes. Uh, today we have a wonderful guest for you all, a legendary hometown guest, born without bones. As always, I am your host, Thomas Radley. Slight golf clap for that one, just a, just a menial one. With me, as always, my cohort and co-host, Lee Wargi Wargo. Another golf clap for that one. Couple oh, more fingers okay. there. And Arco Andrew Grimbeard joining us in the Hawaiian shirt yet again. It's like golf clap. No golf clap needed for this one. Let it rip, boys. Born without bones. Ladies and gentlemen, in the building. How are you guys doing this evening? Better than Lee. Wonderful. <laughs> We're going to act like we haven't talked to you for like half an hour. Uh, <laughs> into this one, we're going to have you guys introduce yourselves on cam just for the viewers out there. So go ahead. What's up, y'all? I'm Scott A. I sing and play guitar on Born Without Bones. I'm Jonathan. I sing and play guitar on Born Without Bones. <laughs> Mostly guitar, though. <laughs> I'm Jim. I play bass and uh, sing also on Born Without Bones. Well, let's dive right into it then. What we want to lead you off with, as we tend to, is the very beginning, if not before the band. Uh, I want to hear, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some word association. You tell me what comes to your mind. Fuck yeah, crepes. <laughs> Probably Rachel's Crapery in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Nutella. Yeah, I mean, but, but, uh, so, I, so I recorded uh, Say Hello in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, and there was a, like a spot, like two blocks away from the studio called Rizzo's Scrapery. And we ate there a ton while I was recording. And then like, even randomly sometimes, like when I'd be like driving through Pennsylvania, like I would just stop there and get the crazy. I've got, I've got a Rachel's Scrapery t-shirt that like, it doesn't fit me anymore, but now it's on like a blanket that my mom made for me for Christmas. <laughs> so it. yeah, I love Rizzo's Scrapery. I always got the turkey club crepe, which is kind of weird, but I, I like sandwich Wait, crepes. what? Yeah, it's a crepe. It's a crepe sandwich. So like this spot does it like the more like, you talk to Scott, you realize it's a freak. Yeah. So like <laughs> no, they do like they do like a lot of dessert crepes, and those are great too. You know, like I'm like a an Elvis, like the peanut butter banana, like that's my that's one of my favorites. But they do like sandwiches too. So they like put they literally like fold uh fold turkey and like turkey club shit in like a crepe <laughs> and and it's like a sandwich and it's so good it's so good seriously okay. if, you, if you have limited your if you've limited your crepe intake to dessert crepes you're there's a whole ocean you're missing out on is there is an crepes. ocean that we are missing out on <laughs> yeah, it's, that it's just, yeah, yeah. Club anything crepes. that you get in Delhi, you can get in a crepe were you prepared to hear that answer? Were you ready for that? So, no, that's a perfect lead-in because I did hear Say Hello in there. Uh, are you guys aware that I can still get Say Hello on a Mediafire zip? Oh, that's so... I'm so happy that you can. <laughs> I'm so happy that you can. Yeah, because I miss, I miss when music was like that. Like, Spotify, like, rules music now. Oh, and like that... Yeah, it's fine, but like the you know, sending media fire links back then was like, oh man, I got like a rush of excitement, like receiving media fire links, sending them. And like there was a time where like, you know, when records like your friends and bands would like have like a demo or something or an album and they, they wouldn't be out for a little while and they would send you a media fire link so you could listen to it. And like nowadays, I feel like I'll get like sometimes I'll get like a SoundCloud link from a friend or something, and, I'll, and like in I, there's like a voice in my head that says like Psh. Just wait until it's on Spotify, man. Like, <laughs> don't, 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 don't. We all feel that on some level, I think. Yeah, it's just, it's just easier. It's more convenient. At the time, there was like a, 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 a sort of like search for like getting those links. And like, I, dude, I was on like Fallout Boy, um, yep. like message boards, like get like getting leaks. Like I remember like getting the in defense of, in defense of the genre by say anything like that leak because I was dying Ooh. for that record to come out. Shut and there was like, anything. Yo, shout out to say anything. Shout out to the media fire though, because like that's what I, I was media fire, definitely. I was, looking, I was looking for their links, dude. Also, very, very like while I do have an appreciation for media fire links, that was very low tech. If you didn't have like a private torrent tracker, <laughs> yeah. But you could, oh man, you could you used to be able to do this thing on Google where like it was like a 
like you could like search Mediafire specifically and then search the words, you know, like to like whatever album or band you're looking right, for. Right. Like if you did a spe- did it in a specific way, it would just show you all the Mediafire links. So you didn't even have to search, like really like go looking for it anymore. It was like readily available. It was just right in front of your face. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but yeah, I really miss Mediafire links. That was like just sending sending out say hello uh, through that. Like I sent all my friends that record when I was back. and it was easy. Porn. Yeah. And then so what CD was cool too. Nobody had what.cd? Yeah, what.cd was also a very that, cool I'm time. not familiar with that one to be honest with you. Oh, so. uh, it's, it's like a it's like a straight up crazy private like music site that you can get like everything on. It's, it doesn't exist anymore, but yeah, it was crazy. It was an invite only it was an invite only torrent tracker and they had everything. And it like there were there were rules. There were rules. Yeah. You couldn't you couldn't just upload anything. It was good. My well, last, so in that those are the best YouTube ones. conversions, if I couldn't find a torrent, it would just go on YouTube and then just record the song from like. That's you know, <laughs> that was the last, last resort to fucking the song on my fucking iPod. Just so you could download it directly <laughs> to your iPod. Yeah. Just for the I'm not a bummer. I'm not a bummer. <laughs> nah, fuck that. <laughs> I mean, I remember taking my little MP3 player and recording like something coming out of a car speaker just so I could play it back for myself because I knew that the radio wasn't going to play it again for like six days. <laughs> I did that recently. I had to. Um, so Jim got married last su- two summers ago. Yeah, two thousand nine, October two thousand nineteen. Golf clap, yeah. Um, or a regular clap. Shout out to Luke. But uh, Scott. <clears throat> so <laughs> fun. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact about Jim's wife is she's a huge um, Hanson fan, like lifer, like oh, tattooed, right? Yeah. Hanson oh, tattooed. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, she has Hanson lyrics tattooed. On um, so, so for the wedding, uh, Jim put like did the whole wedding in his backyard, which is gorgeous, and it's like out in like Central Mass, and like there's a ton of land, and it's it was awesome. Um, but we had to, Jim asked us to play a song when she walked down the aisle that was like a Hanson fan club like b-side like a fan club exclusive okay <laughs> yeah like, like, like my, my wife has like exclusive rights like hansen is genius they have like their own <laughs> fan club that people sign up for they pay money to be in and they get all this exclusive stuff they were doing it before patreon before anything and they did it. every single year they release fan uh, only EP. They essentially invented so, the train. Uh, they'll, they'll just do these like five songs and send them out to everyone that's part of their fan. Club. All jokes and aside, that's uh, impressive. Like, dude, um, dude, they're impressive for me. It's like, like and, at first, when I first started dating her, I was like, oh, she really likes Hanson. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I was like, okay, like that. I mean, I'm not going to hate. I'm not a hater. Like, I, you know, music's music, but. Hey, whatever you like, right? Yeah, but, but once I like saw what they were doing, I was like, oh my God, these guys are doing this. Yeah, they were my first concert. They were the first concert I ever shit, saw. Shit. My first concert was Kings of Leon. Nice. Oh, nice. That's cool. Yeah, yeah they were fans. Honestly, I'm a big fan. Yeah, I, was, fan. I was like 13 or 14, and they are still one of the best live shows I've ever seen in my entire life. I, I don't doubt that. that. Yeah, they're sick. They're good, <laughs> good-ass rock band. We actually we, we use Kings of Leon as a metric for like what is the ceiling uh, or like what, <laughs> like what how do you like modern, modern rock music? music. Like one of the many, like, right. big, them, and, rock. them and the Foo Fighters maybe like say yeah. Yeah. We, we literally we literally use those two bands all the time to be like, yo, can we get Kings of Leon? For <laughs> <laughs> So is it true that the majority of it may have been solo, but your first tour was canceled due to booking troubles? Uh, first tour ever? Yep. Only you only ended up playing four shows of that first tour in August 2010. So first tour ever was actually it was it was, I ended up playing I want to say seven or eight shows, but it it went off it went on. I think the tour that you're talking about was probably like the second and third one, and that that happened when we played. Um, I played like a sh- it was so so weird. It was like a tour that I was trying to do for like two weeks, but I could only get like four of the shows mm. booked. Because like it's 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 one thing to say that your tour got canceled. It's another thing to say your tour never got booked because like, nobody <laughs> wanted to do, nobody wanted to see your fucking shitty band. Uh, but but that that was that, and then in September, you did a six-week East Coast Midwest with uh, handguns, the tired and shrew, and way the. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Yeah. So I, I yeah. So I guess that I guess you do have it right. So the the first tour, I think only, I think only a couple shows got canceled. I like booked the majority of the shows over the Bridge Nine board, 
like the Brit <laughs> Brit Nine record. Yeah, or B9. B9, 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 dude. B9. They, dude, they were really nice to me back then. And then uh, MySpace, because MySpace had this search engine at the time where you could like search a town and like a date, and it would tell you their shows going on. Right. And at the time, like MySpace was hot for the scene, so you could like you could like find yeah. like scene you know scene shows and i would like ask to get on those shows because i was like oh okay like that looks like something that would happen in like the bfw you know to my town over so i'll just ask if i can open acoustic like small ask i'll play like three songs i don't care right. <laughs> like uh, but, but most of that went down like i played i played like rochester i played a bowling alley in philadelphia played in baltimore at um charm city art space um I and played. before that, it was a lot of rad skate park. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of rad. Yeah, definitely a lot of rad skate park. And then even Gorilla Skate Shop before that, which was like before he had like a full on um, skate park, he just had like a skate shop <clears> in throat> Milton. Throat> and it just like sold boards and like maybe had like a little, like a tiny half pipe in the store sometimes. But, <laughs> Hell yeah, man. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that, and yeah. so was this around the time of Neutral Territory Records? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Neutral Territory put out. It's that's cool because I've been. I actually just recently bought a Say Hello cassette that I saw go on sale on Discogs because the story behind it's kind of wild. Um, there was my friend Corey ran Neutral Territory, and he made a hundred tapes of uh, of Say Hello. That was like the <clears throat> initial release of it. It was like album came out it was on itunes and cassette <laughs> like that that I, like <laughs> for some reason yeah, i was yeah, like man. i was like that's cool and uh so like 25 of them he gave to me i think they were all purple and then 75 of them were orange uh and he was selling the orange ones but he got his car stolen shortly after he made the tapes and the tapes were in his car when it got stolen and the tapes were never recovered. So, like, I sold my 25 purple tapes on the road, but those, like, 75, I think he sold, I think he might have sold, like, 10 online at the time. Like, the rest of them just got lost in this, like, stolen car. So, like, oh, anytime, man. yeah, anytime I see those tapes pop up, I'm like, yo, I, I like, especially this time, I was like, oh, I'm going to buy that because there's just, like, there's probably only, like, 35 or 40 in circulation. Hell yeah. That's wow. And so in, in that kind of same vein, it, like you guys, I mean, you're not afraid to say that you guys are a DIY band. And yeah. it seems as though in that circle, though, the difference, at least in my opinion, <clears throat> my horribly untrained opinion, you guys are much more of like a catchy, poppy, like the, the alt rock, more as like most of the DIY bands that we talk to, at least, are much more, you know, it, it's much more punk focused, but you guys have... You guys have the melodic factors to you that I feel like have have brought on maybe a, some or a good amount, maybe maybe a lesser amount of fame. But that that seems to lead into like things like Stone and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, we're definitely a DIY band. Uh, I mean, I think Say Hello has a lot of like super pop punky moments, and like yeah, yeah. I it is. I associate a lot of DIY music with pop punk too because right. at the time when. I was playing those songs and like tour with bands that sounded like that. Like they were also DIY bands. It was a lot of that, especially, you know, in Massachusetts, I feel like at the time it was definitely a lot of hardcore music and then like, yeah, a lot of pop punk. And th those were yeah, kind of the yeah. two sort of like rivaling scenes in right. like, even in my like town, like, like our, like Jonathan and I's like immediate, um, like friend groups even in high school like that you were either going to be in like a metal core band those clashing or ideals band. yeah or you're going to be like a pop punk band like those were kind of the two those were the th those were the kind of two camps we were a house divided yeah but like <laughs> yeah it's true but yeah by the by the time baby happened i think we kind of like started to settle into more of like you know um like through i think through a lot of um like recording the instruments on my own early on there was like a lazy comparison that people would be like oh it's like the Foo Fighters record like right. the first one because Dave Grohl plays on it and I was like our music doesn't really sound like that at all but from that comparison I like definitely went and checked out that first Foo Fighters record right. so like I, I was super great sick. record by the way great yeah record. great record yeah it's so sick yeah like I was super obsessed with that and then, like, you know, by the, the time we were doing Baby, like, they were involved because, because with Say Hello, 
it, say hello is essentially like the sort of hook to like catch other musicians to be like be right. in the band like after i put out say hello i get a call from jim one day that therefore i am is breaking up and he heard you know off the say hello record and they liked it wanted to play bass in it and then jonathan kind of comes along at a point where we don't really have a solid guitar player, but it's like, yo, like we got these, you know, we got Salos already out. We're kind of working on this new stuff. Like you're our, you're like the best dude that we know. And like, you're sick of guitar and your hands in this book, like being, being, being our band. It's literally the nicest you, you smell thing you've ever <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Dude, We love it. We love it. Yeah. John literally is like one of the best guys you'll ever Yeah, meet. John yeah. sounds like a horrible feet. Yeah, true. Feet like a hobbit. He's really bad. He's got feet like a hobbit. But yeah, yeah, it's it is kind of funny to like I, I after reporting say hello, like it was I'm glad that everything happened the way it did, but I really wanted to make something more like raw and like more like I was like I was delusional before like when I was like first kind of putting like say hello together i remember like making it and thinking that like it was going to be more like for like indie kids and for like hipster internet people but then like <laughs> but then like i got like kind of a slap of reality from a couple of people that were like dude you're making a pop punk album like it's gonna be your, <laughs> it's gonna be your regular old buddies they're gonna like your music so right uh, yeah, but yeah, the, the 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 baby stuff kind of just the that sound sort of happened from like us three playing together, but also just sort of wanting a less um, like a, I guess a less produced less produced is sort of lazy, but like less uh, m- more natural. Like we wanted to sound like a band playing songs in a room rather than like a, you know, I don't want to hear a grid necessarily. Like I don't want to hear like a bunch of like synthetic sort of sounds like. Right. We, we wanted to hear we wanted to we wanted to hear like natural drum sounds and like we wanted like to play the Oasis live. Thing. yeah they had yeah. they had like six different producers come in because they couldn't capture their live band <laughs> essence yeah we actually record. we re- actually ended up recording baby like a lot of the music live because that's what the, the sound we wanted to get like capture Hell yeah and, like and, and it worked so you know what more po- yeah. more fucking power to you yeah. Uh, so before we move on, two last things, Scott. I got one for you, real quick. The dismemberment plan. Yeah, one of my all-time favorites. What about the city? Uh, that's that's top ten favorite songs all time. I actually, I was gonna start a blog. I was gonna start a blog uh, and, and like just tell like random stories about music that I've gotten into, and that was one of them. Like because I like I was obs- I heard. Um, gyroscope on mark hoppus's podcast and i thought it was one of the catchiest songs i'd ever heard but it was like so such a weird song such a weird time right. signature uh and i like called newberry comics and i was like hey do you have this cd in stock and that's like, you would call newberry comics yeah like, i called and newberry, you comics. Called newberry <laughs> comics yeah yeah oh yeah and probably yeah yeah <laughs> three years after I've been with yeah dude uh, newberry Anytime new, if I like ever see like a used record of ours at Newberry Comics, I get so stoked because like yeah. I, that, that was my that was my you know I was obsessed with going to that store when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, it but, was uh, best. So the last still- thing to touch on was you sang and played guitar on "Home Like No Place Is There" from the Hotelier. Is that true? Yeah, that is true. <laughs> That's true. I like the way you say Hotelier. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been like this constant thing that we all joke about because I know they, they were the hotel yeah. year and now they're the hotel year and yeah. I know I just I still just kind of keep it in the middle just to please everyone with that so I'm glad yeah. that you pointed that one out but so that is true though you did oh yeah, yeah for sure I've, I've toured with them they're they're my buddies uh at the time like it was crazy dude like look, looking back on it I was we were jamming baby songs in our practice space and then i was driving <clears throat> across the state like to western mass to jam with hotel year and we were working on home like no places there so like like in the same in the same weeks like that was that was happening you know so it was pretty it was cool definitely a really cool time like everybody was pretty gassed and like gassed up on like playing music and like we're really starting to put out like some cool stuff so it was, that it was would a good be time. like a top five for me in like diy moments finding that out i'm not even gonna front like that that <laughs> finding that out that the guy from born without bones worked with the hotelier on this album that i still consistently listen to 
all the fucking time. I read that and I was like, no, that can't be true. Copy and pasted <laughs> it, sent it to Lee. And I was like, did you know this? Yeah, he was like, absolutely not. <laughs> it, it, mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I I toured with them as recently as like 2018. We played or 2019 even. We played four, we played four shows with uh, Jimmy World out on the West Coast. Dude. It was like Jimmy a, World live just a couple of years ago with uh, Incubus. I think it was. Yeah, so so awesome. yeah, 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 awesome. yeah. yeah, we were at the Xfinity like, Center in Mansfield. Nice. Oh, yeah. It's called Great Woods. Get it right. Yeah, it's Great Woods. Bro. <laughs> Great Woods. <laughs> No, 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 that's the original thing. Like, I was a kid. I had no idea. Okay. Because <laughs> I grew up in the town. Yeah, mass trivia, did you ever hop the fence in the back of the... Uh, yeah, no. one time for that fucking show. That was the only time I did that. Uh, okay, so before we get into the first large bit of it, Lee Wargo, I need a wheel spin from you, my boy. Let's see what we got. I'm going to have to get it into the... legendary the... fucking fence, dude. Yeah, bring him back. Scott, if we need to switch to beers, I have zombie dust in the. You know, oh man! Ooh, okay. Zombie dust. There. Fine. Chased by zombie dust. The wheel. The wheels bearings are off the. Uh, yeah. yeah. The, God damn. What bearings on there? Yeah. Rub your rub, your rub your yeah. luscious beer. They're beard ceramics. On They're new what ceramics. The, what the bearings you have in there? Yeah. <laughs> They're ceramic bearings. I got them on Amazon. Lucky, lucky <laughs> Abex. Don't worry about it. Okay. Five. Are those from, yeah. Those from your. <laughs> yeah. They're twelves. Oh, There's twelves now. Bands. Two bands, one choice, or lyrics? Which one did it land on? It landed on lyrics. All right. <laughs> Let's go. The first lyric of the night. So I give you guys a lyric. You tell me what song, what band. Okay. Uh-oh. All this time to make amends. What do you do when all your enemies are friends? Oh, man. I, that, I know what's Tip of my tongue. Yeah. Oh, boy. So I'm me, not and, a big... me and Lee are playing, too. We don't, we don't know. Of course. It, so yeah. We're getting quizzed as well. Say it one more time. And I know it. Fuck. All this time to make amends. What do you do when all your enemies are friends? Oh, dude, I've got like brain rot too. Like I'm. Oh, fuck. I will I'm say. Oh, are you gonna give me a hit? Are you give me a hit. I'm not gonna do it. I'll I'll do it with the rhythm for you. That's the only hit yeah. that you get. Oh, okay, that might be better. All this time to make amends. What do you do when all your enemies are friends? Oh, that is Foo Fighters. Yeah, yeah that's it. Oh. Uh, Pretender. Nope. Yeah, right. No, nope. wait. Uh, it's, Nobody it's not... still knows. I can't believe yeah. this. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a weird guy. <laughs> no, but hold on, hold on. Can you do the rhythm again? That sounds like Pretender. Can you do the rhythm again? It does sound like the fuck. No, oh, it's time to romance. What do you do when oh, all it's your enemies are around? It's Monkey Wrench. Yeah, it's Monkey Wrench. Yeah, yeah, it's Monkey Wrench. Yeah, you're right. All right. <laughs> we, made you that one. we got it. There were no <laughs> hints given, only the rhythm. Wait, if right. one of us wins, do we all win? Yeah. What happens? Oh, where's uh, going? Uh, I feel like right. a winner. <laughs> I feel so, like a wiener. No, you guys <laughs> lose. You have to drink. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah we, all, we all do. We all, we all lose. Uh, if, you win, if you win, you win with booze. There's really no difference. <laughs> All right. So moving moving into the future, I want to spend at least a brief moment on baby because that that was your breakout moment for sure. I would say. Sort of. That's kind of that's kind of an interesting comment because like uh, it's, not, it's, yeah. it's it's like we effectively false. Way. Like yeah, actually, I would disagree with that uh, okay. fact. All right. It start it started off very slow, but that record didn't hit until like. Three years after it, until it yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah. so speaking of DIY, <laughs> speaking of DIY, like we can talk a little bit more about like the the recording and like what the vibe was and all of that stuff. But um, uh, like a good example, like a good measuring stick for like breakout moment. Um, we were in Virginia Beach and we had just gotten the vinyl. Uh, did we drop ship it to Virginia Beach? No, no. I think. Oh, we, we put the pre orders up. We had the vinyl. In on our person, yeah, like, and, and we did pre-orders, and like yeah. there were like eleven, right? Like, no, no, we had like a good, we had like a good regular showing for our <clears throat> pre-orders that we sent from home, but like we were go, kind okay, of going sorry, on tour. We were going on tour like two weeks after that <laughs> happened, right. and so like if you know when you first put out a record, that's when people are probably buying it the most. So we're like on tour, like on this crappy tour, like uh with orders coming in on Bandcamp 
So we're like, <laughs> uh, is, this, is, this, is, this the, is this is this the pizza box store? Yeah, we're yeah, in Virginia. Virginia we're in, we're in Virginia pizza. Beach. We're in Virginia Beach. I think it's summer or whatever. Uh, we're we're on tour. We're getting orders, and like obviously there's pressure to get these things out. And I think we we asked a Seven Eleven. Yeah, it was a Seven Eleven to take to take like a sleeve of pizza just boxes. Cream, yeah, yeah so, we didn't have mailers. Uh, for, we didn't have like the Eli mailers for like records. Oh, and we and we like we like rickshaw oh, taped right. together a bunch of uh, pizza boxes to send out records. Yeah. We turned them inside out. But the Seven yeah. Eleven lady was so nice. She gave us like a whole plastic sleeve. So we're like in the park. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're in the park. Seven Eleven yeah. in Virginia Just Beach. Taping these. Taping taping the the box box box. In Virginia. And, then, yeah. and then I think I think I think Scott ran into like the post office and dropped it in there. And another fun fact is Scott loves. The United States Post Office. <laughs> well, yeah. United States. <laughs> like, truly, truly, like, like I know that there's like, it, it is, there's the allure that like the postal service workers are truly the least happy workers in any any facility. But Scott is the antithesis of that. He loves being. <laughs> he loves, and that maybe game. that maybe that's like a tell about his personality, like walking into. Uh, this space where you know that these, these people are these post office are <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you walk in like hey Scott what's up don't you <laughs> <laughs> they know him personally <laughs> they do it's, it's, you think we're just oh kidding oh my god that's so, yeah that, that is the measure of success for a breakout is uh uh, the mailers from 7-Eleven <laughs> mailers. So stamps. speaking specifically popularity-wise, <laughs> though, like Spotify numbers yeah. and whatnot, it seems like Baby is probably the most successful. Oh, now. Yeah. Yeah. now. Yeah, now. When, right. it first, when it first came and, out, I tell you, I'm tell, you know, there was <laughs> that canceled tour that you're talking about. That tour right. was better than the Baby release tour. <laughs> I tell you, yeah, seriously. Hey, all it takes is time for people to recognize greatness, my friend. That's all yeah. it takes. I always tell people yeah. when Baby came out, we weren't even playing basement shows. We were playing kitchen shows. Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 wall to wall show. carpet. Hell yeah, man. Uh, Erie, Erie, Pennsylvania. Yeah, because because like we really, I kind of at the time, we really, I had like kind of isolated ourselves. Like we were like going on this this tour to to uh, back the record with no opening act. Like it was just us trying to basically find a show in yeah. the city in each of the cities and like having no no backing whatsoever like we were just t like t like it was really pure like grinding diy at that time for sure yeah and that was so you you guys released that july 16 2013 yeah that was recorded at magpie cage in baltimore maryland yeah jay robbins yeah and so the way that it seems like it went anyways, the, the first pressing was yourselves, the second pressing was also yourselves, but then you guys linked up with Counterintuitive along the way. Yeah, Correct. that's true. Yeah. And uh, so how did that, I know they're, they're Massachusetts based as well. Also one time, shout out to Counterintuitive. Shout out uh, to Counterintuitive. And oh, so what, did, cool. they, did they contact you and say, hey, we'd like to press this again, or how did that go? I hit, I just hit up Jake because like I knew Jake that I knew Jake liked the record and I was, and we had kind of sold out by that time and it was like people you know want it seemed like people wanted more copies of it and I always wanted to do something with with counterintuitive and with Jake because Jake like Jake is a person like if you ever talk to him like he's just got you know he's a heart of gold type person. And, I've uh, had I've had Twitter interactions, but he does yeah. he's, he's like a very nice guy. Yeah. No, he's yeah, he's 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 the kind of person you want to work with for sure. He's just right. like so yeah, he's just pure. So um, the type of person you want to meet in this business. Yeah, exactly. He, yeah, he's right. he's rare. He's definitely rare. He's a big contributor to like the whole community vibe of it, and you know that's something oh, that's yeah. really, like fading away. It seems so. Like yeah. having someone like that just be like a candle for it's very nice. Yeah, well, for sure. Shout out to Jake one time. And yeah, so he was just cool precedent. Yeah, if I, we okay. if we may move, so I will say this one piece. I wanted to say this because I love Baby, and I've told you that I'm big fans of yours. But I would like to point out the first four tracks that that may be, and I'm serious here. I I pull no legs. That may be the best four track run in an album I've ever heard. The first <laughs> four tracks of Baby in a row are like you can't it, it's not even like you can't skip one it's like there's 20 seconds left leave it the fuck on i cannot 
I cannot stress enough how many times I have listened to like Rough Terrain and Suffice and like in that four track run, I, I'm sitting there. I'm, I remember one day I'm in my dad's pickup truck at a bank because we were going to lunch. And I what was like, uh, Ford, yeah, Ford Ranger. Oh, that's so good. What the f- and he, <laughs> he was like, oh, you're going to show me a song. Great. Yeah. And I showed, him, I showed him Suffice and he was like, oh, that was pretty good. And then nice. I showed him, and then I showed him Sync. He was like, you know what? That was pretty good too. And then I showed him Stone, and he was like, "Who are these guys?" <laughs> and, and I was a lot like, of parents like our band. I've noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> my my yeah. dad is a, a huge advocate for the that like the alt rock kind of sound, the clean like it's like you were saying earlier. It's not manufactured sounds. Mm. It's a band, man. It's right in your face. Yeah. All the instruments are there. And the second I knew. When when the chorus in Stone starts, my dad had this moment where he's he's driving along with his hand on the steering wheel and he looks over at me and he's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like yeah, I mean, he loves it. I knew it. I knew it. Well, no, that's really cool. That's a good sign. Yeah, no, okay. yeah. When parents <laughs> like our music, it gets me so stoked. I feel like that's like a like a pretty consistent <laughs> theme. Though I have to pee and grab another cold one, so we can all take a fiver if you guys have to pee or whatever. Do whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll get some more drinks. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah let me grab a couple. <laughs> Uh, so before we actually move on, I did want to uh, do the segment we usually do. So we're going to go around and we'll tell you our favorite songs off of specific albums. We'll start with Baby because we were there. Mine is Rough Terrain, Happy, Hands Down. Nice. Very. Why? Hold on. Do you, can you do a why? why? Do you why? do a why? I feel oh, like, that yeah, the no, that's, oh, no, that's totally fair. I feel like the first time I heard it, I was in my car, and when that when that hook like summer's coming is a road to rain, I I remember so vividly being in my Ford Focus and being like, oh shit, all right, let's go. And like I was like, all right, I gotta listen to the rest of this, and then lo and behold, it ended up being the first song on the album. I heard it on like a Spotify playlist or some shit. And I was like, all right, I got to go listen to this. And then I found Stone was the intro and whatnot. But we'll get into that. Okay. So. Viri, favorite song, favorite moment, go. Off of Baby? Yeah. I like uh, I like Stone and then slow motion at the end of the little bit where he goes, your voice goes really high. Ah. <laughs> 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 and then right after it. <laughs> <laughs> that's good we like slow motion uh, uh, Lee Wargo it's just back I, and forth jamming and going slow I love it I think Spotify got it right because my two favorite are Stone and Baby but I really like the screams like a lot <laughs> I, I think that they're just like perfectly done because it's just dude, that's what I'm saying though in Rough Terrain man yeah 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 yeah, yeah. oh dude <laughs> fucking it, it, it breaks my soul it really does I think about it every day that's so funny. But, what is yeah. you guys' favorite song off that record? Off oh, Baby? Um, <laughs> I mean, Slow Motion. Experience. Slow, slow, slow Motion is up there. Okay. Slow Motion. I like playing Stone a lot. Yeah. Fun. yeah. Mine's probably, I mean, not because it, it, Stone became like a more popular song recently. Um, yeah, but cool. yeah, <clears throat> that's always been my favorite to play because like, when we play it live, we're always like do sometimes, well not always, but sometimes we'll do it with this like extended jam in the beginning. Right. That's just super, it's super moody and I right. that, it, yeah, it's kind of jazzy, quiet. Like you almost want to turn on like lamps when I play it. So I, I have a lot of fun playing that. Uh, yeah, I most underrated yeah. song, I was in love. Oh hell yeah. Love. I love yeah. 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 So we, we, that's one of my favorite songs. I don't know. Sync Sync has like I think one of the more interesting guitar parts on that record. Yeah. It, it's a cool it's like a very unique guitar part like the hook is cool um we don't play it a ton yeah, anymore we played it a bunch we played it a shit yeah we, we, we do you guys shit play out, suffice right? a lot yeah yes yeah, so yeah. that's it like, suffice is suffice all right so like when you buy a, a a new turntable or a new stereo like it is it, it like it is uh in the audio file space, it is important to always play Rage Against the Machine self-titled. <laughs> because because it is because it is like for rock and roll, it is sonically perfect and it is a great stereo test. This is like do do your due due diligence. This is this is a standard thing. But whenever we're testing, whenever we're testing like a new like practice space or like new amps or like 
We recently just got a new PA. Suffice is the, the test song. That's yeah, control. Control. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, truly, truly, truly. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> so before we moved on, uh, before we move on to the next, we need another wheel spin, Lee Wargo. Hit me with it. Sweet. Let's get it. Spin that shit. Give me some good shit. Oh, my camera some... is like really far behind. <laughs> this makes <laughs> me want to be on the prices, right? You are you guys, right, right. Welcome. It's a surprise. You guys need to get a Plinko set now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's fun for way less time. Yeah, he put his finger on it. Lyrics again. Yeah. Oh, oof. We're bad at this game. If you played like a an esoteric jazz chord from like a, <laughs> like, like from like pop music and and threw it our way and be like yeah all right hit us with the lyrics I need you that's a sharp yeah. lyric clap up we can switch uh, we can switch the lyric for a trivia question if you'd like no I mean no no, no, no either way let's I mean why have that. a wheel if you're not gonna do what the wheel and says that, right? yeah. all right like, the wheel the wheel is the truth yes yeah, she nursed him there over a night I wasn't so sure she wanted him to stay. What to say, what to say. Oh, God, what to say. <laughs> Can we, like, the rhythm hint was really good, and again, I think that's more because, like, we care about the, the rhythm and the music than... Here's I, the thing, I, I, that's I think totally it, fair, but I can't even think of the fucking rhythm of this song in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I would love like to do it for you, but I'm not that guy. Can you say it again? She nursed him there over a night. I wasn't so sure she wanted him to stay. What to say, what to say. I'll give you one hint because I can't do the rhythm for you. They're technically a grunge band. Um, technically, technically a grunge band? So, so light, yeah. They're light associated up. with grunge. I don't consider them grunge. What, Alice and James? Is that, no, is that, I consider that, that is definitively grunge. Yeah. Is it? Is yeah. it Lifehouse? I consider Alice and absolutely. James grunge. Uh, is it Goo Goo Dolls? No, but that's hilarious that you bring that up because we it's discussed this back. earlier. Dude, Metal Nickelback. Blade Records, look it up. <laughs> uh, have we given up? We've given up. That is Pearl Jam, I, Dissident. Oh, John! Oh, honestly, dude, yeah, also, honestly, yeah, all right, guys. Hey, here's a trivia question. Can you name one more questionably garbled vocalist than any better? <laughs> yes, yeah, right. yeah. more, uh, yeah, it's even remotely <laughs> close. On a wizard, on a whale. Uh, honestly, uh, like, if, if you pull, like, the top three Pearl Jam songs on Spotify to a common audience and said, Name the lyrics to this chorus. <laughs> you would have a spray in there. Nobody, nobody would know. <laughs> All right. Um, so the next, the next large <laughs> section that we'll get into is, of course, Young at the Bend. Now, this was May 12th, 2017, so only about four years ago. Yeah. yeah. And coming off this record, you guys were still touring and still doing shows pretty consistently. Yeah. This was recorded February between February and August 2016. Uh, Clinton Lisboa at Soundbox, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yes. Mass to Mass album. So I feel like uh, one thing that I would be remiss to not bring up would be the fact that the general consensus of this record is that it's more of a mixture of both Say Hello and Baby. You guys, you refine the sounds, the poppier aspects, as well as the grittier and the grimier aspects. And there are, without a doubt, some of the best songs you guys have made on this record. And of course, we know the painting right there. So we want to dive into this a little bit. I know you guys mentioned there was a story. You start where you will. But tell us a little bit about Young at the Bend and how it came to be. Uh... Well, also, that's a really interesting take on the uh, the mix of the other two records because it's uh, I I think that um, I don't know I just love hearing the uh, I guess like the takes from the outsider looking in oh, on what absolutely you know, that's, I, 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 that up because I know you I, guys probably think of it in a different manner. Yeah, but it's uh, but we don't matter, right? Like you're, <laughs> the, the, listener, the listener matters. Like that's right, honestly right. like so important to to us. Like just like what your interpretation is right um but i don't know uh i don't know this so like behind us like uh my friend lucia uh had been painting a series uh, a series very similar to this in different colors um and it just happened to be that i think literally the story is like one day we were in the studio like 
looking for album cover inspiration and like she posted something on instagram or something like that right and we like just sent i think he i think he just like literally sent it to like our whatsapp like group chat like we're just us three. Oh, okay and uh yeah for, like i i kept that picture like of that painting just like saved on my phone for a long time right and uh like i just kept coming kind of kept coming back to it and some of the title ideas uh, for the record kind of matched it like blueprints which is like a interlude that ends up on the record like that was kind of in the running for like a title for the record and i was like well there's like shades of blue in that so like that could kind of work <laughs> right. and like you know like it and it's so abstract that you can like really you know you can really take anything out of you know i could have seen like a sort of edges of a crown and like the sort of waves in it but like young, but John, it was John's idea to do Young at the Bend, and it was like I think it was like something from like an interview that you uh, listened to or something. That's like, actually so- awesome that you say that because I was going to say again from an outsider perspective, say hello and baby are like there. You know, it's just a couple of words. Young at the Bend seems more deliberate. It seems like a, something you guys had picked out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the the I I think the name came from a um from a, a podcast or an interview i was listening to on npr so i was actually driving back from my grandfather's funeral um by myself from like the middle of maine which is like a four-hour drive or whatever and i was listening to npr or whatever and um it was somebody talking about um i don't know like i honestly think it was like a religious based thing but i wasn't really like the the derivative of that was not really the intended purpose right. um but the way I think the the narrator was describing it is like the sort of like the um, the tension right before a break of of something, um, you know, something some profound moment, good or bad, uh, just about to kind of like jump into your lap. Um, so just like the the that like eleventh hour before something big's gonna happen, and just sort of like the youthfulness of being there in that moment. Um, you know. It's like the calm before the storm, like the, the sky is looking fucked up. Like, so yeah, like, that's a very thoughtful response. I like that a lot. Oh, Viri, your camera is uh, at least on my screen. Anybody else? This no, is it's good. Yeah. It's a pure green screen for me. So as long as it's fine for you guys. Uh, yeah, Ethan's looking good. He's looking great. So <laughs> the way that I see Young at the Bend anyways, and again, this is just my opinion, but I, I feel like Fool and Wishing, and in parentheses, you, well, are, I mean, easily two of the best songs you've ever made, recorded, written. Uh, I mean, they're just, they're undeniable in not only their songwriting, but the sound of them is so full that it just like, it punches you in the throat. So I would I would say that those are by far my favorite songs off that. Uh, do, do you guys have a favorite off that one? I mean, it's interesting you say that because we demoed those two songs together before we went and recorded the record. And like the record that we're making now is like the first time ever, I swear, the first time ever where we've really done our due diligence and like demoed like a lot of songs. Right. In the past. Like Say Hello, Every demo for that record was basically, well, I mean, it was recorded twice, but like all the demos were just like iPhone recordings or like right. the, the internal mic on like an iMac. Um, and then Baby, like we did like five shitty demos in the, in the practice <laughs> space. And we basically just made them like shrug and we're like, that's, yeah, we did, we demoed, cool. Those will see the light of day someday. Yeah. yeah. But young, for Young at the Bend, we demoed um, Fool and Wishing Well. Uh, like a few months before we went to actually the yeah that was kind of that's that's an interesting demo story because sort of that was sort of song. but like that was like kind yeah, of like a tryout for for Clint, Clint. yeah yeah because yeah, we were like oh like we want to record someone local for this and um yeah we went to demo with Clinton to see if like we vibe and then we totally did and, like it and it totally worked yeah, yeah. Well, it's all, I mean, hey, any working relationship you got to make sure that you you know you enjoy the people you're working with so that makes perfect sense. Yeah. But I would say my favorite song from Young at the Bend for me is probably Romance. Romance or Wishing Well, those two songs, because they both kind of came about in a similar way. They were, they kind of were the kind of songs that just fall out of the sky. Okay, I see. Right. And what about, me, what about the rest of you? For me, I would say What I Was Missing is my favorite song, just because it's like more the softest thing we ever did. And it was like, I think we, we do, as the three of us, we're really 
good at like doing the rocked out thing and like really, really you know putting a lot of energy into stuff right. um even though like stone and baby are like our number one songs but just like naturally i think we all have that natural energy but what i was missing really was like uh for me like just something different for us that was just like more like a slow song that's played out through like <clears throat> yeah I don't know. I just like the whole sound and the texture. Oh, like of it. I'm really attracted to the texture of that song. I guess is what I'm trying to say. No, that's a good. That's a good response. Honestly, I like that. I, I actually think the exact same. Um, all of Jim point. Jim's points are uh, in my head. Um, I, I will say that was one of the hardest songs that we've ever had to write. Yeah, it took a while to, to like really lay it out. Was that um, one of the longer songs that you've had to? Yeah. Yeah. Practices, of, I, of practices to really get it, get it fully going. Get yeah, it, get all the hits and everything right. I want to say it like almost didn't make it too. Like it, like there was that was, was like a, a in the maybe pile for a while. So, yeah, totally. Yeah, that was totally like a fourth. Yeah, fourth quarter song because that was one of the last songs we recorded. We did that record in like multiple weekends recording wise, okay. and that was recorded in the final weekend. Of, of, uh, like the sessions for that record yeah and like when, <clears throat> when you play it too uh, i don't know if it goes for you guys but for me like you, uh, sometimes like i grew up playing sports and you really have to get into like a mental place oh, to yeah. be able to perform and for that for that song i really have to like calm my head down All and right. like really focus and get into a different spot and like really focus on bringing my energy down to be able to play. Yeah, especially yeah. after we're, you know, we're playing like a set of like, you know, say playing a set of like 10 songs, like seven of them are just like, you know, like sort of head banging, like, right. you know, kind of driving rock songs. And then like three of them are going to be like, you know, the stone baby, what I was missing type things. Like, so yeah, to get down to the, that, it's like kind of tough sometimes because it's like literally going from like sprinting to like doing, I don't know, like meditating or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like you, you're really like putting your feet out on the ground to slow the brakes down. Yeah, you know, and it, mentally that's that's really tough to do. All right, here's an analogy. Like when you're when you're playing sports, everybody always says stretch after you play or stretch after you work out, mm -hmm. and nobody ever does. Yeah. <laughs> what I was missing is like, dude, you gotta stretch. Yeah. Like that, you're gonna, you're gonna tear a quad. As a, as a baseball player, every time I would be in the batter's box, the the only thing going through my head from the ages of probably 9 to 14 was becoming the bull by Atreyu because I would have to <laughs> nice. up with my arm yeah, in no. <laughs> I'm going to fucking hit one out, buddy. And yeah. So I, I completely understand your uh, your analogy or metaphor there. Uh, Viri, what's your favorite song off Young at the Bend? Fool. Nice. Be, I mean, it's a nice. masterpiece. Lee Wargo. <laughs> I fucking love Dude, it. It's not. It's one of our least popular songs. Yeah, which is funny. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. I love fucking song. I like. Uh, <laughs> takes time and young. Those were two of my nice. favorite. And Maybe it, you dig it like that sort of heavier sound. It was different. Uh, what's that? What, no, yeah, I said I really like the difference in choosing because it seemed like baby we were all kind of on the same page. But young. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So it takes time and okay. And young both, uh, were like kind of had like a similar vibe to me. It was like, there was some distortion. I felt like you guys were playing with. That was really cool. And, uh, well, okay. So first time I heard it, I was like, this almost kind of sounds like it could fit on like the, like the brand new science fiction album. <laughs> science fiction is like a qualifier for us for like as far as like good sounding out like emo rock albums like yeah, it, it, it was different emo. yeah it was like it kind of it, it kind of sounds really good sounds good really yeah. so, okay we're we're pretty much in agreement on that one before we get into the games of it all lee wargo i need another wheel spin from you my boy right before we do the wheel spin can i run downstairs and grab the pizza we just ordered you oh, feel free, yeah. my friend. You can keep talking amongst yourselves, so I want to be here for the wheel spin. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so it seems like, at least in a general sense, just because, I mean, this will probably be off camera. This I don't even know if this will make it. <clears throat> Excuse me. In our, in our heavy editing process where we really <laughs> mark out things. Uh, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to say, it, my, my big question, I know you've talked about this a little bit, Scott, the the idea to put stone at the beginning of baby 
was shot down ultimately, and that was where the compromise came of putting Stone's intro into Rough Terrain. How, how did that whole process go? It was the same thing that happened with Say Hello, and, like, I lost. Like, <laughs> but, like, I'm, like, yeah, it's okay to lose sometimes. Uh, yeah. Like, with Say Hello, I wanted Sound of a Crowded Room to be first. Mm. I wanted... I wanted like something, you know, kind of ease in, you know, like sort of like a massage or something, you know, to start, start <laughs> and then slow. To the heavier parts. Yeah, exactly. And like, I, I don't know, there's a, there's a, there's a few records like, um, Whoa. uh, what's that Regina Soviet Kish by, uh, Regina Spector. Uh, I think the first song, I forget what the first song is called, but the first song on it is just like her and piano. And then the second song is called Oh, Do divorce and like a, a new element kind of comes in like i like the idea of like starting a record with like less and then building up like as you go sort of uh, I wanted, but yeah i wanted to at least say this too because i know we i know we talked about say hello but the camera turns yeah. i mean jesus christ man like what a what I a song like that, really. that song it, too it 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 oh. almost goes straight into baby i feel like i feel like it transitions <laughs> yeah. perfectly into that album that was so. that that was the song that i heard i'll say hello where i was like god damn man like i because I, I heard baby first and then i went yeah. back to say hello and i heard the camera turns and i was like jesus christ like yeah we're, we're talking three three years apart i think right yeah but similar situations like it's you write you write long songs when you're right. like, when you're just like bummed out, man. You're, you're like, when you're heartbroken, for, like for, as a songwriter, when I'm heartbroken, <laughs> I guess I just go on these like, like tangents, and it's sort of like, a, like, like because a, a six minute song or a five minute song to me, like as a songwriter, is like pretty indulgent. Like I'm, you know, if I'm telling, if I'm giving anybody advice on writing songs, I'm like, you know, you know, try to keep the shit like below four minutes. Like, <laughs> make, sure, make sure, make sure people are like kind of interested in what you're doing, like in less than ten seconds. But like right. those songs are like very, yeah, they're very like indulgent. They're like sort of long. Um, they're very similar. They just it, sim, very similar emotions, very similar events lead to writing songs like that. It almost reminds me of the the story from Queen, where Freddie Mercury presented Bohemian Rhapsody, and they were like, "You want me to put a fucking eight minute song on the goddamn radio? What the hell's the matter with you?" And he was like, "Oh, is eight minutes too long for you? Your wife must be very unhappy." <laughs> and I I think about that all the time because i'm like dude eight minutes is not that long of like a time span but the general like i guess i mean i guess it would be like the general concentration if you were to listen to an eight minute song most of the time people will tune out at some point and you don't obviously you don't want that in any music but you have you know fucking whatever stairway to heaven and bohemian rhapsody and whatever the long i mean tools got fucking 13 minute songs who knows from autumn to ashes I, I don't I don't even know what that is, but there's just, there's a, I feel like there's a delicacy in writing those kind of songs where you put in all this time, you put in all this emotion for people to tune out after three or four minutes. It, it seems like a robbery, really. Yeah, I think that's what attracted me to becoming like attracted to like becoming attracted to this band was because like I was in a post hardcore band before. And just being able to hear, like, I heard, remember hearing Say Hello uh, when he had demos coming out because um, my friend Burton was um, friends with Scott at the time. And um, I just heard it through him, and I was like, oh, this is really good. And then later I was able to hear stuff um, like The Camera Turns, and it was like I was in a post-hardcore band, and I, I liked it, but I, I my deep down, like, he was hitting the spots of like something I really wanted to be a part of and really like, cause I grew up on like third eye blind in like nineties. Hell radio. yeah. You know, like nineties yeah, radio. Baby, best like, album ever fucking made, baby. Yeah, yeah, self, I agree. We and, um, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. So, like, I scream that in more people's faces than you have any idea. We they fight for the blind fight. <laughs> oh my God. But, and I know but, they're all dicks, but whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know anything about them, but uh, I mean, I love that band. But, I don't, personally, I don't know. But the the thing that attracted me was that he was able to write these passionate songs and not... Because it's super hard not to be corny. 
And, right. you know, we tell, like, you can just be like, you can take city lights and then boom, your whole song is ruined. Yeah. You know, but yeah. I listen to these songs and I like felt the emotion that he's putting into it. It was like really attractive. Is that a moist? That's the difference. No, <laughs> no, no, not really. No. Would you, I would, that, that, would you guys consider yourselves Manchester Orchestra fans? I am, yeah. I saw them live. They're one of my favorite rock bands live. I think they sound. I, I have awesome. seen them live fourteen times. Wow, that's um, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of times. I love, <laughs> I love Andy Hall so much because yeah, he's, he's got a cool like, voice. You were just saying there's a very fine line between being a cliche and corny songwriter. Mm-hmm. And getting these emotions to be evoked through like actual, like visceral, especially live. I heard Kali strings live one fucking time Damn. on the 14 shows. And I must have been like, I didn't it. It. oh, I lost yeah. my mind. Me and yeah, my and they're, they're a great know. band. They're a great band to, to like, that is exactly that. They're like, they hit your emotion, but not in a corny way. And it's because like the person delivering it is there's a realness coming through it where they actually are feeling those things that they're writing about rather than being like, you know, just uh, a craft yeah. macaroni and cheese of, like, yeah. of emotion. That people are a craft macaroni out. and cheese of emotion. You know? <laughs> Cannot think of a better way to bring yeah. it. <laughs> Put that on a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make t-shirts now. Uh, <laughs> that bowl with the front bottoms? Oh, my God. <laughs> We went they, to see. They, they, they played the sunshine, oh. and I got fucking chills on oh. my toes. I was like, yeah. <laughs> we saw, <laughs> we saw front bottoms. And they played and it so Andrew. well live. Oh my god! Yeah, they're yeah. really good. Yeah. That song crawled straight through me when they fucking played it. There was an opener. I cannot rem- recall who it was, unfortunately. But this crowd of I don't know a very eight, eight, nine thousand. I mean, there. they. It was as if it, it was, was a, it was a UMass no. It was a college show. It was so there was. But it was a, it was a stadium. It was at um, the fuck is it called in Lowell? Uh, Songus Arena. Songus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Songus. Uh, it but it was as if these these people had never heard of Manchester Orchestra, I think, and I they're. Think, I think they were too late. They're playing like they're playing uh like the gold and uh what's yeah. the uh fucking no, what's the no oh. one was moving no one was like I was like right. I was so taken aback because I'm screaming probably ruining people's nights and just yeah. having the time of my life <laughs> because yeah. I mean I just want to see Manchester yeah. play whatever they want to play. This one right there. Um the the like I have a very particular like a weirdly close group of friends. Um that are like I've had since high school and it's weird. Like, I don't feel like a lot of people stay very close with their high school friends, but I have like seven or eight friends that are like deeply still like very close and uh, talk every day and whatever. Like it's, it's almost, but they're all like deep, deep, deep Manchester orchestra extension into bad books and send Hell extension yeah. into the and stuff like I, lo- I love me some kevin divine i will be honest the sum of the parts i feel like is not equal to their individual talents though andy and kevin divine both write amazing music i'm not I, i'm not a huge fan of bad books never have been yes yeah, yeah i saw them once at sinclair it was fine it was good it was dude it was crazy it was bad books and front bottoms sinclair the and front bottoms when you in boston open, were opening for bad books so oh. it was like this, this was pre this is like pre um town was it town of the hawk is that what it is, is that what yeah, that yeah. Oh. so this is pre town of the hawk yeah can i tell you my front bottom story because it's one of my favorites yeah, I went, I went to see a Manchester Orchestra show. I might have been 15, something like that. This band's opening for them. And they got wacky, wavy, inflatable tube men oh, in the band. Yeah, 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 going yeah, yeah. fucking berserk. And I'm sitting there with my older brother, Peach, and I'm just like, you know, I'm pretty drunk, I'm pretty stoned. And shout out Peach one time, love that kid. Shout out Peach. Peter Joseph. Peach. And no, it's DJ. Peach. Uh, so it's amazing that you were that close though that's fucking crazy he's gonna love it though he he loves you guys actually Uh, so we're we're sitting there and we're like maybe in the middle of the crowd and nobody's really doing much and i'm i'm pretty drunk at this point like i said i'm like 15 16 uh legally speaking i was 21 so you had you had you you Probably had a four loco in the parking lot. No, I snuck in a sleeve <laughs> and nipped, and uh, I was just pounding them. And uh, so all of a sudden, I start hearing the song that uh, became Skeleton 
And I remember, I remember so vividly being like, yo, I turned to my brother and I, word for word, I said, is this wicked good? And he looked back at me and he goes, I was just thinking that. <laughs> and for the rest of for the they may they might have played two more songs I and i remember going home and being like i'm gonna go listen to fucking front bombs for the rest of the day like and that was that was a mind-blowing experience for me and then i ended up seeing the front bottoms i don't know me and Fury probably seen them 10 times along by ourselves but that th those are two of the biggest bands that we've seen the most the front bottoms that's sick. You guys sound like fun people to go to shows with. You guys sound like future fish fans. <laughs> uh, dude, that's a, that's a trip, and I don't think you meant it. You were sincere. You felt. You felt. Yo, straight up. If you love live music, I, I'm not. I'm not a huge. I'm not a huge fish fan uh, personally. But like, like if you love live music, you love it, and it, like it affects you emotionally. It's like fish is kind of close. that's that's the road you're going. Yeah. To. I've actually seen <laughs> fish live. I can I can attest to this. You can attest. Yeah, I've seen this. Yeah. I'm not huge into fish or anything. That's but I I mean at this point it's probably been 400 or 500 that's shows that I've been to. So I just like, all right. I'm, 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 all right. Yeah, I just like honestly at this fish. point there there Did are so many twice? times. <laughs> Jim seen fish. Did you I see saw fish parts? twice in he a row fish. at the Worcester DCU Center. Hell and yeah, dude! I'm not a fish fan. I wasn't a fish fan before, and I'm not a fish fan after. But that was one of the best shows I went to because the lights were crazy and the mushrooms <laughs> I took were awesome. There it is. <laughs> dude, so I took, dude. And so, dude, so here's here's something I don't understand about fish. You go there. And you, you see all these people in the fish. Every dude is the ugliest dude you've ever seen in your life. And every girl is gorgeous. Dude, I know that. It makes that no sense. It makes no sense. splits the mold very well. Yeah, I'm like, dude, people don't know. People fish, go to a fish show. Yo, fish is rich, rich people hippie music. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, have a good tech That's, job. They got Birkenstocks without the a feet good tech job. job. <laughs> Go to a fish yeah. show, or, or, or you're like, or you're like a like a financial analyst, um, but you're <laughs> you, you save up you save up your vacation time and you do the baker's dozen in New York City. You definitely and, uh, took a shitload of ass and when you were like 19, yeah. 20. Yeah, that's the but you, but you, but now you like now you like buy like now you buy like your drugs on the Silk Road or like whatever this is like. <laughs> All right. because you do because you have Bitcoin. If, I, if I bought Bitcoin and I found out about the Silk Road, oh I'd be God. a good jillionaire, dude. If you, oh yo, yo, if you bought, I, no, like we were there, like we were like when we opened up the Silk Road, dude, we had like. Uh, tape over our cameras. Like, we were super scared. We were like, dude, are we going to buy DMT on the Silk Road? Oh and then we were like, we, all, we, were like we just need this thing called Bitcoin. We just need this thing called Bitcoin. And I was like, what? what is Bitcoin? My roommate was like, I don't know what it is. And we just need it. We just need it to be able to buy something on the Silk Road. And I was like, how much is one Bitcoin? And the whole time, I stoned ass. We just started taking dabs at that time, too. Oh. Like, we were just in We have to convert our USD into Bitcoin. Dude, we're, I'm just like, oh, I'm not giving my money to Bitcoin. It sounds too weird. Should have done it, dude. I hate that guy. Uh, I'm not giving him my money. Sure. <laughs> I, talk. I, think I, I think I've seen I think I've seen Dave Matthews more times than I've Hold on, there. Yeah, hold on. Cool. That's awesome. Sleeper, sleeper, like yeah, uh, cool. All right, uh, <laughs> I, I, I talked to, I talk about this. The, this is like my pitch at parties, though. Like my, my theory is that Dave Matthews Band is the Guy Fieri of music. <laughs> yeah, I hate that. Oh, okay, yeah. Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri is the man. I'm a Guy Fieri. Right. The, 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 the Venn diagram of Guy Fieri and Dave Matthews Band, philanthropic, masters of their craft, super positive. Like no, like if you watch Guy, if you watch Diners, Drive-ins, and Dives. Always has something nice to say, even if we know <laughs> this. Like, yeah, he's yeah. just uh -huh. here for you. He's yeah. he's buffing your business, and like right. you know, taking bites of things he doesn't like, and he's just like, I really love 
very specifically the texture of the parsley you used here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he's a shell. In this restaurant, um, Dave, Dave I'm Matthews, <laughs> absolute supreme musicianship. Absolutely. The songwriting is interesting. The orchestra behind them as well. Yeah. He brings an orchestra to all of his shows, dude, and they're all nasty. There's no, there's nobody in the background being like that guy five that's just like, I'm gonna play this chord in the chorus like for a second. Everybody, right? It's an here's, here's the, here's the middle of the Venn diagram. Absolute terrible fans, just like, <laughs> like the fandom around like the, like the. Like the Guy Fieri thing and and the Dave Matthews thing is abysmal. It's abysmal. <laughs> I, uh, I actually do have a hot take though because I know Dave Matthews band has whatever their fucking popular songs are. Dude, I don't even know. Crash into me probably is number one. Where where are you going? Is the best fucking Dave Matthews song that has ever been. Great song. Played. That's that's the best song by a mile, in my opinion. Like it's not even close. I, I don't which know. One, that I, which one do you? Where think? are you going? Where are you going? Where, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> we are clipping that. We are clipping that where and putting it going? all over social media. <laughs> that is incredible. My favorite argued. It's I I really like his cover of Along the Watchtower, Tower, which he's done a million times, but. Oh, I I watched a YouTube video of that. He's done along the Watchtower at like ten fucking sh different shows. Yeah, a couple of them they are crazy and they chill. So me. I felt when Weezer covered fucking what's the story Morning Glory by Oasis. <laughs> just two, <laughs> just two worlds that I never saw really coming into coming into contact. Now I want pizza. <laughs> no. For real though. What do you guys got for wine? Anything from Mass? Westport. Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, Scott works at like a wine and cheese shop, so we get all this nerdy shit. Yeah, we get stuff. From, well, we get really great stuff. Like, yeah, like, like, like great talking cheeses and shit. South Coast has got some good wine, like the Cape and fucking Truro, P Town and Westport. And... They make they make wine down there. Yeah, this is wineries. Good. Yeah, Dartmouth. Yeah. All, yeah. all on the South Coast and the Cape, we got good wine. It's the same thing with Shut up. Some of that period. It's kind of a thing that, like, uh, want good wine. <laughs> okay, it's shitty to say this. It's just like certain, uh, certain geography is just like yeah. can't make good wine from. Like, well, it's, it's the same thing as like Newport, Southern, like, like along the, the bottom of Rhode Island and shit. All those wineries. It's the same kind of geography. You can yeah, good wine or not. I don't know. Yeah, everybody's just yeah, everybody's just like really snobby for some reason about northeastern wine for not, some reason. Not me, not me. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> if it's wine, we, he's drinking it. I'm gonna fucking drink it. I finished this last night. I didn't really want to, but I did it. No, we run into it all the time. It's just so weird. Like I don't know. I don't. I, I honestly haven't tried enough to make an opinion. But like, it's yeah. weird. People have like a weird stigma against like wine from northeast uh, USA. That's crazy. Yeah, it's because we smell like farts. Against it? Yeah. Damn. yeah, against it. Damn, that's yeah. because we get my wine own. festivals and we just get hammered and we just yeah, we're my, having my a good time. My wine standards are pretty fucking low. <laughs> Yellowtail. There was a, I, I played rugby in college, and uh, there was a uh, there like obviously like they like there's a <laughs> whatever slap the bag that you guys oh, ever do. Yeah. But you know what this is. <laughs> The Slap wine bag? bag, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so, so like Franzia had like we did a thing a couple times, more than once for some reason. Um, <laughs> the box of wine chug, and it was a team of two, and you had to finish the box of wine, but the entire time you were eating buffalo wings. Oh, God. <laughs> how is that possible? Uh, terror. You had to not stop chewing buffalo wings or drink at the same. No, you were just, the activity was you're drinking buffalo wings, but the first you're person drinking to, buffalo. <laughs> you're eating buffalo wings, but the first person to finish the the first team to finish the box of wine, whilst participating in the activity of eating the buffalo wings. <laughs> uh, the winner 
Sounds like a freaking blast, like, dude. Can you can just imagine? Imagine the bile that my uh, the bile. You get that up with you. Yeah, don't Before throw that up. Before we get into the drinking games, <laughs> we need one more wheel spin, Lee. Back when I didn't drink, I used to go to parties with like a case of like sugar cookies from the supermarket. <laughs> I would have loved that though. I would have eaten every fucking sugar cookie though. And more like the small milks. Like I just get is like <laughs> the little frosting. Oh my god! Just get some um, milk. And it just, landed you know, on the chug. No, it didn't. Well, <laughs> we're talking. Here we go. Because uh, me and Barry were talking about how we had the shotgun. So, Barry, but it didn't land on a shotgun. Though. I chugged him. That is, that is the chug. Yeah, if this were like a finish your beer type thing, this would be over soon. Oh, it's there. Uh... <laughs> you gotta chug that whole fucking, what do you guys got there? Seven percenters or so? <laughs> Probably. God. It's zombie dust. Have you guys ever had this? No. I don't think so. Is so. anybody beer nerds? I drink a lot of IPAs, but I'm not a beer nerd. It, so like, <laughs> I, something, cool about, <laughs> something, something cool about Tor was like, like before everything was just widely distributed, like you would go to a state and be like, yeah, we can get like, before Yingling was out of Pennsylvania, we would like get Yingling in Pennsylvania. I think or, it was like, like a <laughs> state in Florida or Deschutes oh, yeah. in California. Um, and, and zombie dust was like regaled as the, the IPA of the Midwest. Okay. And it was it's like three Floyds. I think that's Indiana. Um, yeah. but this was like the, this was like the fucking thing. Like I used to have, um, product friends in Chicago. Yeah. Product placement. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I used to have, I like my friends in Chicago used to like mail me zombie dust and now I can just get it next door and it's nothing. Yeah, yeah. Nope. It's like Wayne's world when he's like, Oh, you have a headache. Take two of these. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 All right. I, I, would, I would say I usually drink like pretty much co- like for beer, Coors Light nowadays. Yeah, I drink Coors Light. Too. I don't really like beer. Like when you get old, yeah, when you get old, dude, it's just like I gotta stop. It's, my my shit light all time. My I've been drinking. Beers. You guys like sake? Like Sacco? Like Maine? Sake. 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 Maine. Yes, that's what you're saying. Sake. 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 Yeah, I was gonna say the shit that they squirt yeah. in your mouth oh. and shit. Yeah, 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 but it's different. Like that shit they squirt in your mouth is like the cheaper stuff. It's cut. like, it, yeah, it's no, cut. it's the cheaper. It's like, there's just different, on, there's different levels of it. Dude, honestly, if you ever see some like delicate little bottles of sake at the mall, I mean the mall at the liquor store. Oh my god! Yo, sake. Are are you going to the mall you going to the mall later? No, I'm not going to the mall later. Uh, but yeah, you want to drop some Adam Sandler on me? I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, I love Adam Sandler. Um, Dude. Yeah, it's like a very cool thing because there's like different regions of Japan that like rice is different, so the flavor of stuff is a little bit different. It's like oysters. You know, you get like different regions right, of oysters. Right, right. 100%. Yeah. I've been super into it, and oh, I'm not man, really the oyster god here. <laughs> he wears his job is to peel oysters back really? over and over again. Where? You're, you're shucker. Scallops. Oh, scallops. Okay. Uh, yeah, you- yeah. Shellfish. <laughs> Shellfish. Yeah. I have- oh, cool. I was, I, like- I, was in, I was in the biology field first, and I was aboard uh, commercial vessels, but I've done both that and working deckhand over the last couple of years. Yeah. Dredging. You're dredging for. Scallops. Yeah. Yes, that's awesome. Very yeah. cool. I feel, like, I feel like the Cape in New Bedford. If you've ever been in New yeah. Bedford. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, recorded, we recorded New Young in New Bedford. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Down, yeah we, downtown, yeah. like Union Street, all those buildings down there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, one of the old mill buildings. Like, uh, it's, no, it's down by the... On no, the it, it was on the water, near the water. Sorry. Like, if you okay, go, yeah, yeah. You know, sound the whale like recording? The whale yeah. more? Yeah, the whale The now defunct sound box recording. Oh, that's dope. Oh, you know... The whale yeah. murals. Oh yeah, it's down by down by there. Yeah. All the graffiti. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Big... right next to Rose Alley. Do you do you ever get the impression that everything we tore that? It's like, it's less than a mile, dude. 
<laughs> so that's how close it is to Rosa Alley. <laughs> um, no for blame though. Shout out to Burritos. Yeah, shout out. No mm, problem. I, I had no props this week. Yeah, nice. we yes. played there a couple times. No, yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, something, something that's uh, uh, another trivia fact is the <laughs> the last two records we recorded. Uh, basically, the studios fizzled and disappeared after we finished recording in different ways. Oh, in right. different ways, yeah. Um, I, all right. So, you kind of like cool. the good luck Chuck, except it ends instead of begins. No, so, uh, something cool. Like I love this fact. All three records, actually, all three records. The studios that all three records were recorded in are no longer uh, recording studios. Oh, wow. all three. That's what. <laughs> if so, you're in a recording okay. studio, stay right. away. Or if, maybe if you're trying. <laughs> Yeah, those, people, right? those people still make records, but they know See what happens. Oh, goodbye. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Um, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. No, but <laughs> yeah. what I really yeah. like to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we all turn our heads, we can do the rest of the podcast. We'll, be, we'll keep flipping it. Either way. <laughs> Are you back in, Link? All right, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> uh, no, I love, I love this, uh, this one factoid just because I love this record. Um, when we did Baby uh, in at J. Robbins Magpie Cage, uh, it was the the Magpie Cage now exists closer to downtown in in Baltimore, but um, the first studio, the first record that was done in the Magpie Cage we recorded in was Searching for a Former Clarity by Against Me. Oh, shit. And Baby was the very last record that was done in that studio. That's fucking cool. Oh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. I would repeat that all the fucking time. I would tell people that every day of my life. I'd Honestly, be the weird guy at the bar being like, hey, you want to hear a fun fact? <laughs> <laughs> like, um, and that's how me. no one likes you. <laughs> you no, know, that's not why. There's plenty of the reasons. Hey, what, what <laughs> about myself like against growing up was like such a like uh, especially like scott and i went to the same high school that was like against me was such a big band for our like our music community and like this one kid steven sabatinelli in particular like that really was just like was like one of those kids that had like a studded leather jacket that he like screen printed an against me patch on and like just like lived by the the fucking like ethics like hat was like a yeah. car carrying like punk you know what i mean and oh, yeah, he, would, he would come hang out at my house and like my dad's like a very like uh he's just a, an italian american like he he is just uh in the flesh joe pesci like just a fucking five nine italian guy Definitely. and he my, that would just come and hang out in his like mohawk and leather jacket and uh like show my dad against me records and searching for a form of clarity was one of those that was like like it wasn't cool because it wasn't punk against me and maybe right. there's like, their right. time in their their timeline shout out to what, that what yeah. record was uh thrash unreal Way later, oh, that was yeah. Later. yeah. Way later, yeah. But which, but which one was it? I can't think of the right. name. Was that New Wave? There's the one that New Wave. Yeah. The or is it Panther on it? Or whatever. That was the Panther that Panther. was the first Against Me song I ever heard, and I was fucking oh, floored. Or Crash? Is it White? It might even be White Crosses. That's a long Maybe. timeline. But dude, like, they got a lot of albums. Against yeah. Me, Against a lot Me, like, of fucking shit. Against Me had life before the record I got into, and even that is way after that. Yeah, Against Me must be a band for like almost 20 years now. Which Long is time, man. Yeah. Yeah, I saw them open for Jimmy World and Green Day at Gillette Stadium. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, just because I've been listening to it the last two or three days, shut up, Bleed American, because that fucking album is great. Right. Yeah. It's so Straight good, off. dude. It's so I thought it was great. Bleed America the whole time. Seriously. That's hilarious. How's it feeling? <laughs> <Yeah. dumb? Yeah. laughs> there, there, there was an issue with it where it came out around 9 11, so they And they changed the name to Jimmy Eat World. I, World yeah. I just recently yeah. found out about that like, like a year ago or something. Yeah. Would you awesome. guys rather have trivia or lyrics to start it out? 
Trivia. Trivia. We're fucking oh, terrible. Everybody, everybody's there with it. What is your name? Real name. What? Meatloaf's real name. Meatloaf? Yeah, what is Meatloaf's real name? Oh, shit, dude. I don't no, know. Man. You can ask my mom and she I don't would care. Know. Dude, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 34 and you're like, you're like going way beyond right. me. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, his, his, name is, his name is Michael Lee Ade. Good for him. Uh, which, <laughs> band <laughs> served, which band served as the house band at Andy Warhol's New York City studio? Oh, he fucking right. nailed it, bro. Holy oh, shit. Yeah. That, was, that was miraculous. Hold on. We're going to drink to that one. Who that was, was it? Fucking, it was the Velvet oh. Underground. That was fucking crazy. How'd you get that? Okay. I mean, they, they were really married. Yo, that banana cover, man. Yeah. That, but, but that banana cover to me always says Andy Warhol and Velvet Underground. Yeah. 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 All right, yeah. fair enough. Yeah, it's um, a in we're honor switch of over Andy to Warhol. Right. In honor. <laughs> hey, that's a long, hey, you have a long middle finger. That's yeah, a huge yeah, fuck you. That's, 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 that's a huge fuck you. Like, 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 mine's kind of aggressive. You got long fingers. <laughs> right, you got, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, but at least got to be like that one. Oh, uh, <laughs> hey, will you stay a while? My smile will not mislead you. Because I've been alone, my faith turned to stone. I know. What is it? It's a uh, motorcycle drive by by Third Eye Blind. Nope. You're, no. you're the right band now. Oh, it was not to see you. <laughs> I know. I, I can sing it. Yeah. Is it um, God of Wine? Thanks a lot. Nope. All great songs. Hey, I know it's Third Eye Blind. I know it's Third Eye Blind. I want you. Nope, you all have to drink. These are five, six guesses too deep. It is good for you. Good for you. Mm. Can I take a piss? Is it good for you? No. That's that's so so amazing. Third third Eye Blind self-titled for me is one song beginning to end. Because I could just listen to that record. Yeah, and just be like, "What song is that?" Like, dude, it's like dude. I don't know, one song to me. I don't listen to it. Besides, semi charmed and jumper. Yeah, semi charmed and jumper. Slow motion is the best song. That I like the no, slow motion's blue. Slow motion's blue, yeah. But the the debut of that I mean, album, I, I very legitimately come through the track listing of the debut album, and I reach a point. I think it's about London, where I'm like, okay, I've already heard five or six of some of the best alt rock I'll ever hear, <laughs> and there's still seven songs to go. I'm not sure my heart can handle this. Yeah. And then I reach God of Wine and Mogado Cycle Drive By, and I just break <laughs> apart into particles. There's no, <laughs> there's just, it's just so good. There's it's nothing that so sounds like it. So it that's also, what I about it. Yo, let's listen to it on the ride home. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, we triggered it. There we go. We push play. I'll play it. Yeah. We're FaceTime. We're FaceTime. No, honestly, though, like that, like something that's cool about that record is like it actually does have some pretty good sequencing. Um, we're all nerds for like album construct. Like we talk about, we talk, like we get deep and critical of one another when uh, somebody presents a, a record that's like, this is a, you know, this is a really important album and we'll, we'll be critical of one another and be like, yeah, but you know, like, I don't know. I feel like the B side was a bit heavy and like, they, like it wasn't, it wasn't like, it didn't have a good story arc. And we get, we get very into describing like the, um, I actually the, like that you're saying that though, that. because, uh, although it may not be in the same genre we're discussing, I, I constantly quote J Cole on this one. He said, we spent, we spend about 12 months deciphering what the album sequence will be for people to not give a flying fuck. And Honestly, you, yo, real talk though. You Wait, care, you care, but the average consumer, they don't care. Yeah, they don't yeah. care. But here's like we were talking earlier, like about like what your interpretation of records are, like right. like what how you would describe a record to somebody who's never heard it or like never heard right. the band. Right. Like I like that's why I don't think any of us talk about it's like the intention. Yeah, like, or like like if we we're talking about uh, Young at the Bend, like so, like we would never really like just like di- like intrude upon your vision 
by our interpretation of what, what we were doing. We want to hear it from you, but make damn sure that like the sequencing is for us. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's almost like something like where we all have a bit of a perfectionist to us. So like, I think even going through that is just satisfying. Oh. Like it's like almost sweeping around your house, you know, getting it clean right. and everything. It's almost like we have to do it to feel comfortable releasing something. That, because no, that, no, that makes it might, not, it might not matter to you, but maybe there's that one percent person that cares. But that's, but that's what I mean when I say the and average there is. consumer. Yeah. That, I will I will yell at people about album sequencing. Like I will I will get in their face and I will fucking scream at them because it matters. Yeah, but the I average consumer awesome. doesn't care how the album plays. Like, it doesn't care what order. They're finding that one song that they love, and they right. put it on a playlist, and they fucking repeat it over and over again. Yeah. That's we're, just the average consumer ideal. We have that 1%. In, not verbally. Like, we've never been, like, talked that out, but I feel like we have that that 1% person in mind when we're kind of... Yeah, why not appeal to those? Yeah, exactly. yeah. There was a, big, there was a, there was a cool little out. signed hand that just came in there. Yeah. Actually, just grab the, the, the swipe for this. Wine swipe. God of wine, dude. Swipe for swiping. Uh, there was a <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Which, which Led Zeppelin album featured Stairway to Heaven? Oh, Led Zeppelin 4. Yeah. Oh, shit. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Nailed that one. I'm going to drink. Okay. Just because, I'm going to drink just because you got it so fast. Same. You didn't even get a shot to take. When you were talking about like the like first four songs on a record earlier, about like, right. maybe, like, has, this, like has this guy never heard Inside A Led Zeppelin 4? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to tell you this right now, and I mean this to the core of my fucking soul, and I'll say it for all the world to hear. The first four track of Baby is way better than the first four track of Led Zeppelin 4. <laughs> Can I make one we, I, I don't I give a fuck what anybody has to say about it either. We do not stand on that, but that's cool. All right, all right. I will stand on that hill till I die, I dude. actually agree with that. <laughs> what band's lead singer designed their famous logo? Uh, band it's Def Leppard, yeah, Def Leppard. If, if it helps, it's a fucking huge band. Misfits? It's not like it's huge. No, <laughs> yeah, I did design Def, the Def Leppard symbol. Um, no, it's not that one though. What what what, band, what era is this band from? Because uh, like, we're gonna all right, we're gonna throw you. Uh, I don't know if I want to though. I don't know if I want to give you that. We hint, already though. had a couple guesses. Come on. There's a lot of hints though. All right, I'll give you one hint. There's a movie about it. And what is a logo? You know, like there's a movie. About Nirvana it? has that like smiley. There's face. a movie about it. There's a movie about the logo. No, about the band. <laughs> like a but like a big Hollywood production movie, not like a documentary. Does it have Tom Cruise in it? I wish. <laughs> What'd you say? Queen? Yeah, yeah, like queen it is Queen. It is Queen. Nailed it again. All right. Oh, yeah. Roman. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are on point with these fucking trivia, though. I will give you that. All right. Go back and look at Jeff Leppard. Yeah, go look at Watch the Jeff Leppard VH1 movie that's on YouTube. Is it? Is it like a documentary? No, it's like a acted out movie about their career on VH1. All right, you know what? I'm gonna do that tonight. I guarantee you that. I can't. I can't. Awesome. I can't let go of this. This. Uh. This four track. This first four songs on a record. Oh, baby, baby over Led Zeppelin four all day. Hold on. There. Oh, there. Let's, let's I ones. would say. I would say like a strong number two right beneath Led Zeppelin four. And this is a hot take, and I don't feel like it. I will uh, allocate you in representation either of you. Joshua Tree, you too. Oh, nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. It is a fucking chance. Whoa, I, I appreciate your opinion, but I disagree greatly. That, that, is, that, is, a, that, is, that is the G rated version of saying go fuck yourself. Oh, you, know, you know what I would put as my number one, though? Honest to God, this is my, this is my true statement. Uh, definitely, maybe Oasis, the first four track run on that, flawless. It's wow. flawless. Mine, it might be Rage Against the Machine, Evil Empire. You yeah. got People of the Sun, Fantastic. Vietnam, and then Revolver. Like Revolver. Mm. Oh, so Fucking jam, right. dude. Yeah. Revolver is probably one of my favorite. It's all probably all of it. 
Yeah. Wait, so, all right. Are, so are, we, any, what, what, are any of you guys... Right where I was, right so we were discussing the four track run again, and I said your, that you're probably your my first four tracks off an album, right? So I said that my first my first place would go to definitely maybe from Oasis. Mine's Rage Against the Machine, Evil Empire. Uh, I mean, if we're gonna really like, we're gonna really split hairs and hairs in terms of ears. impact. <laughs> <laughs> Wines, uh, it's tough. It's just tough. You're gonna tell me right now that you don't listen to Rock and Roll Star, Shaker Maker, Live Forever, and Up in the Sky as if it's just like raining down on you the rock and roll. I love. Uh, uh, all right, all right. here's here's a here's a hot take from left field. I love it. The things we carry by Have Heart. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Oh, Have, have Heart. heart. Yeah. Heard, have they heard. don't even know what that is. All right, hey, <laughs> you're home. Bedford. Your homework is wow. listen to Have Heart songs to scream at. I'm song. gonna write this down right now. Okay. Have, yeah, Have the, Heart. The things we, the things Wait, we. Wait, what kind of music is it though? Hardcore. It's it's, it's, it's it is it's, a it is a die in the wool. Yeah, hardcore it band. is All Boston right. hardcore. Yes. yes. All right. So favorite bands ever from Massachusetts. It's period. Favorite bands ever from Massachusetts ever. Aerosmith for sure. Okay. Have Heart. <laughs> Have Heart will come second. Yeah. Probably we were, just talk- we were just talking about Have Heart. We were yeah, just talking about Massachusetts band like three hours ago with my brother. Uh, All right, and I, and I brought it up, and he recognized it. But I'm not. See, I'm not it's crazy. not. It's not thrice, right? What's the what? Dude, what's the band? I always forget. Fuck. There's Four a band, there's from, band from Boston that I fucking love, and I always yeah, forget. Ours. My yeah. favorite Boston band is probably Cave In. Cave In. Yeah. No, no. Well, no, that's not the one I'm thinking of. Do you, do you love Dropkick oh. Murphys or Jay Giles? Uh, I could fuck with some Dropkick Murphys. And uh, did I go in you with Guitar Center and we saw Jay Giles? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, walked, I walked into Guitar Center in Boston before it moved to. It was on uh, Common Com App. And I walked in, Jay Giles was doing like a workshop, and there's a bunch of what people. The fuck? Yeah, that's fucking crazy. I thought it was car. That's tight. Yeah. Oh, honestly, um, I, I still maintain that like recordings in the in Massachusetts, like one of my favorites, Guster, Boston. Yeah, Guster. Yeah. Never heard I, of them. I maybe. Saw, I saw Guster in Western Mass at Northampton. Nice. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, but honestly, God and Country, that EP, yeah. Yeah. they're like a local issue. It's a different, it's a different yeah. thing. Um, I waited six, six, I waited in line for six hours to meet Joe Perry from Aerosmith. <laughs> nice, let's go. I love that though. Worth Fun it. Fun fact. Uh, so Stephen Tyler's kid played football at fucking uh, what's the Quincy Catholic School? Uh, <laughs> Ah, what's it called? Uh, it's whatever, whatever Catholic high school is in Quincy. Uh, and my mom would go to the games and pretend that her child was on the football team so she could talk to Steven Tyler. You? And it, it only worked maybe once. And uh, she still brags about this moment to this day, even though Steven Tyler was almost definitely like, get the fuck away from me. I don't know. I was playing football. <laughs> Weird guy that would be like down to talk to anybody because he's just like so eccentric. Yeah. He, he, was, was, he was very much the opposite from my mom's standpoint, anyways. <laughs> he's a very loud and arrogant, yeah. ignorant you boss. Don't know, you don't know. Mom, <laughs> he's the that's same. The thing. His daughter came to my house when uh, on Fountain Street to a party. All right. Not Mia Tyler. The what? actress Mia Tyler or Liv Tyler? Not Liv Tyler. Mia, Mia Tyler. Mia Tyler. Tyler. Yeah, oh, okay. she's like a punk rock kind of girl. Like as much which one? Of, which one is the actress? Liv Tyler. I think Liv she's Tyler's a. This one's a model. Like, and then there's Mia Tyler. She was like dating someone like of one of my friends. I'm such a big fan. I know their kids' names. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> me, 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 Mia, if you want to make this a four-hour affair, we can start talking about. Start it. <laughs> oh, we're here all night. We're we'll be here all night. Don't you worry about it. Uh, I feel for whichever one of you has to cut us. Talking about Aerosmith to me sucks because, it, like, it, <laughs> it, 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 it just becomes it becomes my personal mission to like convert you. Like, it's not. It's in nine times out of ten, it's not possible. It's never gonna happen. But like, man, yeah, just like I grew up on that shit. Like, I had 
I, th- I feel like most of Massachusetts was grown up on Aerosmith, though. Yeah, but but Aerosmith is like from our like hometown. Joe Perry grew up in Hopedale, Massachusetts. I live in Milford. Those towns border each other. So my, like, like my my grandmother was a was a uh, like a foreign language teacher in high school and had like Joe Perry in class. Which foreign so, language? <laughs> she, 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 spoke, she fluently spoke Portuguese, Italian, French, Spanish, and oh my God. Okay, all right, never mind. <laughs> I heard Portuguese and just assumed that was the brunt of it all, and I was so wrong. No, weirdly, like, weirdly, like my grandmother was like of like five children or something like that. The only one that was like eligible to go to college. Like your grades are good enough, we'll spend money on you. And she went to Boston College and Wellesley College, like in the thirties. Like just oh my god, you know, like brilliant woman right. and and taught Joe Perry Italian. I think <laughs> that's fucking right. crazy, dude. I gotta have a point about Aerosmith. Is that my favorite movie is Days and Confused. And there's no, Amen. The, the whole movie has no plot. There's nothing to really take from it besides the the star of the football team is more worried about getting Aerosmith tickets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Randall Pink, Pink Floyd. Randall no, Pink Floyd. He's more worried about the tickets. Than his whole <laughs> Aerosmith. <laughs> Look, yeah. This is, this is like an embarrassing thing, but I I recently read um Matthew McConaughey's book. <laughs> <laughs> I feel people? I feel no shame for you on that one because I would read that all day, dude. Yeah, no, but these guys, these guys would drag me through broken glass over that. But there was a lot of talk on Daisy and Confused, and I thought that was a, a fun thing. I'm just saying, yo, talk. <laughs> favorite favorite rom com, probably How to Lose a Guy in Ten, in ten Days. Ooh, yeah. that's a solid one though i gotta i mean if i'm being honest my favorite rom-com is still probably the switch up because i love jason bateman but yeah. when it comes down to it i can agree with you on that one yeah how was that in 10 days good one good play uh, what, 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 was mine what band's co-founder died in a motorcycle accident in 1971 well all well, the brothers wow jesus yeah. fuck what right. was it yeah, I thought fucking. Dude, did Susan you ask your dad? Already, already already no, these are actually the things that I just have uh, picked up over the time. What yeah. band's original name was Roundabout? Speaking and of no, band, it's well, not yet. Turn around. Uh, side, side note: Heart, Heart of the Sunrise by Yes is top ten favorite songs. Great time. song. Great song. Right, I don't so know who's it It's ten minutes long, and I love long songs. I don't care. Dude, so, dude. I'm like on the fence with long songs. Oh, well, John, John's the guy that would be like sending you a Spotify link and be like, listen to the whole thing. You open it up and it's literally like, like literally like one five. You open it up and immediately open it up. Dude, I have to like clock in to like how to get posted to this fucking song. Dude. I'm not check check out Electric Octaves. Are you saying that? Just be like, like, uh, 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 like uh, something like, uh, uh, that could have been roundabout. Uh, <laughs> Rush maybe. Deep purple. Deep purple. Deep purple. Um, I wouldn't yeah. be guessing. Now you guys have to drink yeah. because I have yeah, taken all of these sorry. hits. What was the answer? When you guys are winning. Question? It's Deep Purple. What band's original name was Roundabout? My Deep Purple uh, knowledge is limited to <laughs> smoke on the water. <laughs> yes. all right. long, long songs. Pink Floyd had Adam Hartmother, which was like 23 fucking minutes long studio yeah. version in like 1967 or 8. I was ahead of the curve. Yeah. Money's long song, right? Money's no, like eight it's, or nine it's, minutes. Yeah, it has like nine minutes because the intro is. <laughs> like, yeah. That's it's, not yeah, long. It's only eight, eight or nine, eight or nine minutes. minutes. Yeah, it's, 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 it's <laughs> several Pink Floyd songs longer than. I'm not anti long song as long as it's good, but get to the fucking point is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. There's some tension there, though, between Scott. If it's long just to be long, then fuck it. Hold on, let's say. What about The Decline by Noah? Yeah, I was just going to say that. The decline by no effect. Twenty one minutes. Yeah, it's like twenty one oh, minutes. One song. I love, I, love, get I love no effects. Yeah, how's that? Like, how's that one do? Oh, true. <laughs> you want me to recite twenty one yeah. minutes for you? Yeah, it's twenty one <laughs> minutes. Give me, it, give me it in two seconds. Yo. Roar! Uh, no effect. The first time I ever saw them, they opened with the decline. They played the whole song. They played twenty one a twenty one minute song. Insane. <laughs> <laughs> Balls on those guys, and, and they played it for me too. 
They were they were incredible. You, you can't take it away from them. They're, they're a ridiculously no, good. Absolutely not. Yeah. I toured with No Effects, and the thing, the behind, the only thing I didn't like about it was like the banter. The banter, like you know, those guys is like a funny, very like just kind of like outspoken kind of you know group of guys, but they had the same exact banter every single night. Ooh. Like I saw them like. Yes. Like, Bogus. The same I don't like it. It's manufactured. I don't exactly. like it. Get it away That's from it. me, dude. That's what I didn't like about it because I like because my idea of them was like, oh, like you know, this band is just you know just like a bunch of dudes showing. They probably don't even practice. They probably don't even practice, but it showed that like, oh, dude, it's all rehearsed. Like right. they just have the same jokes every yeah. night. I don't like that. Like, I'm with you on that one. I don't like that at all. Oh, it says the it's wrestling guy. Like, guy. That's totally yeah. bad. So you're the, you're the outcast. You're yeah. the underclass. But you don't care because you're living fast. Yeah. Oh, Lyric. Oh. Can you say it again? You're the outcast. You're the underclass. But you don't care because you're living fast. No friggin' idea. That's Can you sing it? That's what's really belief of. Uh, offspring. You're the outcast. You're the underclass. Oh, shit. But you I don't this care. One. Cause you're living fast. Honestly, I just wanted you to sing it because I knew I wasn't gonna know that. But oh, you were gonna no, give it all you had. I know if, it's any, if it's any consolation, we've already talked about this band tonight. Who is it? Against me. No. Nope. That's against me? No. I'm guessing. <laughs> Fuck. That's Oasis. Bring it on down. Fuck! I was gonna say oh. that. Damn it! Uh, <laughs> all right. So I, I guess it, what makes me the biggest poser Oasis fan is like I I'm a, I am a you, you you know what I'm about to say I'm a what's the story? If guy. I well that, oh. okay okay all right but that's fair because that album is flawless. However, flawless. there's a there's a difference between the Outcast fan. I mean yeah the Outcast fan. The Oasis fan who Wonder loves fan. what's the story <laughs> and doesn't like definitely maybe. And the yeah. person who can appreciate that, I mean, without a doubt, in my mind at least, definitely maybe is the most rockin' album that they have ever made. I don't know I the album names. Album. I know the songs. Great but album I don't know cover the album too. Oh, a phenomenal album cover. Is that wait, Whatever. is that the one where Liam's laying down on the floor, or is that uh no, um, I'm thinking of the pool one. The one with the pool and the bike, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. one, what, what? Uh, it's the second album where Liam's laying on the floor, Noel's playing guitar, staring out the window. I can't think of it. Well, whatever. What, whenever they, I play like bars, I play. I'll, I'll play like "Live Forever" acoustic and like. Is it, but it's. it's I mean, it's just so good. How can you not? It's a good one. We've covered Oasis a few times. Yeah, with dude. Yo, I would like, like to hear that if I'm being yeah. like, if you guys can send me some MP3s Seriously. of those, that'll it be media be... fire. We, <laughs> all right, so we, so we, co- we used to cover Champagne Supernova, like all oh, the a Champagne and Supernova, all the time. and that is so not an appropriate song to cover all the time. Like that's like, the song. like yes, it is. Like, I remember, like, <laughs> so, like people used to bring up people still sometimes bring up stories of us covering that song in like inappropriate situations like <laughs> like i remember like we were embarrassed like yeah it's got kind of, like we played like uh we played like a house show in north carolina once and we played that song and then we got like seven people there dude you don't do shit like that situations man yeah you just look stupid you just look dumb when you're like okay we're gonna play this like eight ass minute song <laughs> by oasis <laughs> 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 Yeah, like in like not play your own song that you wrote. Like you're on like some DIY tour. Don't That's come hilarious. to Champagne Supernova. It's not. It's not. A you concert. always get those people. In the I would front. love that though. You always get those people in the front that like are too young to even know who ISIS is, and they're just like this. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, okay. yeah. But those people can, and I will be quoted on this. Go. F- Fuck them so. <laughs> hey, you, you, you can't hate people for being now. ignorant. You can't hate people for being be ignorant. Young. You can for be sure. young, but don't be ignorant. No, <laughs> you can be. That's what being young is. Honestly, though, like there, there's gotta be, there's gotta be a trajectory where most younger kids are not getting exposed to Oasis organically from their parents. They're just hearing Wonderwall. That's really. Maybe. 
Maybe. Uh, they, they'll hear it at some point That's because enough. some douchebag at a party That's will enough. bring out an acoustic guitar one, one, and start two playing days. Wonderwall. Two for days all of the is going to be the day that you listen to Wonderwall. <laughs> 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 If you, hear, if you hear, if you hear, back in anger too. <laughs> if you hear it, and maybe you, like, and you think <laughs> Wonderwall before Live Forever, then I have nothing for you. That's just yeah. it's just it's a separation of people. Uh, she's electric. She's electric. She's has been on the maybe oh, pile for a long time. So good. Yeah. Roll with it. Oh, I love it. In her false witness, oh, we so hope long. you're still with us to see if they float or drown. Our favorite patient, a display of patience, disease-covered Puget Sound. Oh. I recognize that one. I know you do. No. <laughs> so that's like a maybe a Seattle band. Oh. You have no idea how close you actually are. <laughs> I mean, Puget Sound is Seattle. Or right. Washington. Is rather. it Death Cab? Is it Death Cab song? It's not Death Cab. It's not. I got the Death Cab lyrics right here. The domicile. He's down there. Yeah. Back when I was playing with Hotelier, we used to cover a title track by Death Cab at shows once in a while. Ooh. Yeah. I thought it would be That's something we got to search for as well, I suppose. Nah, this is uh, zero. Does anybody have any guesses on that one? Or oh, no. Can you say it again? Is it Lonely Forest? Is do, it, uh... do, the, do the singing thing you do. No, I'm not doing it on this one. Oh. I can't do it on this one, dude. I'm sorry. There's just no way. That is Nirvana. Frances Farmer will have her revenge on Seattle. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. could have totally did that. That's easy. Absolutely. I am not Kurt. I am not Kurt. You could have gave like the what, what, dead voice. So that's, at on, least. that's on in utero. Yeah, that's on in utero. Yeah, that's, that's in utero. Come on. Yo, uh, pretty pretty obsessed with in utero before. That, that album's yeah, their best that, album. I don't give a fuck what anybody. Yeah, Stepless Apprentice is. Uh, oh. I think maybe their best song. Milk it. So, one of the okay, Scentless Apprentice is probably top top three, top two, and it's not two. That <laughs> one's <laughs> that one's right there. Listen to Milk It by, um, I think Milk It's the song on uh, In Utero, and then listen to Young. Yeah, no, no, I know that. That song's phenomenal. Yeah, when Young, young on um, Young at the Bend, it's like, it's kind of a Milk It. Like, oh, more interesting. Shit, I like it. To an extent. You know what's All funny? Right. Start quizzing us on baby lyrics or Young at the Bend lyrics, and we probably still wouldn't get it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm never going to do it because I always do that. I always throw it. Fuck. All right. Yeah. You're cold like a stone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> baby White House. God damn it. <laughs> now I can't do it. That's my whole gimmick. That's my whole stone cold, dude. All right. <laughs> Before, all right, we got a couple left. So before that, let's get a fucking wheel spin, Lee Woogie. I forgot I had one of those. All right, my stack of beer cans has become like immeasurable at this point. I can't, I can't drink anymore. So we're gonna win this. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Scotty and I can drink though. Yeah, we. Can drink. <laughs> I'm dry. We might triple cross the streams. We've gone from we have, we have red wine to red wine. No, sorry. Two wine. bands, one choice. We oh, haven't boy. done that one yet. All right. Two bands, one choice is when I give you. I'm gonna give you two bands that are completely unfair, but you have to you have to collectively pick between them. Okay, uh, I, I love them. Sure. Yeah, we do this hundred. We times. might. This might be. We're pretty opinionated, so this might be easier. Okay. <laughs> Prince Daddy and the Hyena or Dog Leg. Oh, that's yeah, not. That's, that's, rude. Rude. that's, that's messed up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, that's, 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 see <laughs> we're all opinionated. This could last forever, and then they're all. Yeah. So yeah. Rude. Yeah. 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 What is your best way to slice up so, the United Nations? Yeah. Yeah. No. So. Oh no! I know. I know. I know why it's unfair. I'm just gonna say P Daddy because I personally know them and I've hung out with them, and they've been part of like Born the Bones history for a long time. So right. I'm on, on yeah, the court. Like Corey's dad. We've had Corey on here. We talked about you on that. Yeah. Dude, Corey is, um, he, they did a really cool thing in um, their area of like, like upstate New York. Like and his, his dad, dad's dad, house, right? His dad's house. They own the ice They own the old, and it's like an old ice. But like they, dude, his dad would clear out the living room and it had like a legit stage. It was friggin' like a weird setup, but very cool. And it was just, dude, seeing that stuff is like, that's why the, our music community exists because things like that happen. 
Right. You know, yeah. and, places. and that's what I like when shows start coming back, that's what we're going to probably need a lot of, of just like those opportunities of where people are just, you know, you know, younger people are just trying to do whatever. It's like really interesting to see what's going to happen. But so yeah. for for the other two thirds, Prince Daddy or Dog Leg? Oh, my God. Why are you going to make this? I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, that's I'll, the whole point of two bands, one choice. I'll, I'll back Jim and say that I like like me like Corey's dad in particular reminds me a lot of my dad just like absolutely yeah. complete yeah, like right. they're not the same type of personality but just like in terms of like complete incompatibility with like person in context in the moment right like just a dude with like a kid that is just not connected to a reality that is like part of the neighborhood or part of like the, the town the community and, yeah. and he's just like, yeah, fuck it. This Super is what supportive. he wants to do. Yeah. Let's do it. Like, and I'm, and by the way, I'm gonna dial the fuck into it. And Corey's brother is like, uh, like into hip hop and like ripping. Like, I don't know. The last time we were up in, oh, yeah, up there, yeah, like yeah. he was like, like he has this There's wall records, of records yeah. that are like, like he's he was sampling from and whatever. And like they're not they're oil and water type people. And uh, I mean, just like the right idea and the right mentality about it. That being said, I think it's an unfair advantage because it's like home field advantage. Like we, right. we know them so well yeah. and it's not fair because the dog leg guys like write kick ass songs. Like that's right. yeah. Yeah, shout out to Dog Leg for quiet. Yeah, I mean I'm go I'm gonna have to go P Daddy too, but like shout out Dog Leg. I love that band. And we played with them a lot in uh in michigan like anytime we play like a house yeah, show yeah. outside of detroit like they would usually be on the show and they're you know they're a band that you know when you play when you go on tour and you see four or five bands a night like a lot of them like unfortunately just kind of like you just forget about them you know totally right. like you know because it just blurs you see it you know six days a week uh, right. at times but like dog legs like one of those bands that like you see and you totally remember because the performance is so wild the music is super loud and it's super right. passionate and super genuine and they're super nice people and like i, I love their band but yeah pete with with prince daddy it's definitely <clears throat> it's definitely closer to us just because like i mean closer to the heart yeah just because even talking about like Corey's dad like Corey's dad was like one of the only people like at the time, like when Corey's dad would like talk to us about our music, like it really felt like he was one of the only people that really got it, and that was right. that was re that really meant a lot to, to me, you it, know. Like, it kind of goes along that like parent thing that you were talking yeah, about. Exa like, exactly. you know, was like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like fun fact about mm -hmm. that though, me and Viri saw Prince Daddy live at the Sinclair in Boston, and nice. his dad was on the second level of the show. Course, and I actually, I actually went up and shook his hand, and he was like, "Dude, just thanks, just thanks for being a fan of my son." And I was yeah. like, "I really like this guy, man. He's uh, a great guy." Yeah, like he's he's to me, he's like if like I didn't have the best relationship with my dad, so seeing people like that is like, man, if I ever became a dad, that's the type of person I'd want to be. Like just right, like right. super yeah. involved, super supportive, giving your kid like all like whatever they need for whatever they're passionate about you know and, and kind of like really fostering them to be who they are and like a, i have mad respect for that so that's what it's all about who, man. yeah who knew we'd be gushing about Corey's dad on a podcast <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i hope he sees this i hope he sees this it yeah. seems like a perfect time for us to end it off i'm going to start by asking you three what we always ask our guests Give us your thoughts. We want to hear about Newborn Without Bones. We want to hear about what you've been working on, and we want to hear about when it is coming. Hit us now. Uh, we've been working on new music for a pretty long time now. We like started demoing at my house like on like every Sunday, uh, probably in 2019. 18. 2018? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were we were just kind of just getting together in the house every Sunday, kind of trying to come up with a new song every time. Um, and then like, yeah, well, obviously with like uh, coronavirus and everything, like that kind of delayed things a few months. But we've been plugging through, and we have a ton of new music, and it's it's probably gonna some will come out this year, some will come out next year. Um, but we, yeah, I'm really stoked on 
what we're doing. A lot of things are kind of changing and are different about our band now than they were. But um, we'll have big news coming soon, but we just can't do it. Can, we, can yeah. we get a single booze and tunes exclusive? We want to know when when that single's coming, baby. We want to know when it's coming. Uh summertime probably. Yeah, you're probably here. Summertime. Yeah. yeah. You heard it here first, folks. Yeah, you <laughs> born without bones summertime. Yeah, summertime or fall, we're hoping. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, thank you. Well, what direction uh, are you guys going? That's what direction? Uh, like from where you are now with well, from your last album in 2017. It's funny, man. Like we're doing right now, we're sort of doing like a thing where we're um like it sounds lame but we're like sort of reflecting on everything that we've done like right now currently like we're you know playing a lot of songs that we've already that that have already existed for a long time like songs that you guys might know um but then there's also a lot of these new ones that we're working on and uh like you don't get to bend like uh is was definitely like a darker record for us and I would say that the new one is a little more lighthearted and a little more like I think we're really just trying to have fun and just trying to um, yeah. like have a good have a really good time playing these songs. So it's it's maybe you know like somebody the other day like asked us on like Instagram or whatever like to like say how sad is the new record (laughs) (laughs) you know what i mean you know what i mean and like i feel like that's any that's like a question like any emo band would probably get but like uh like or emo even emo like leaning band but i don't really think that this record is like that like sad necessarily i just think it's it's it i think it's a perfect chapter for like if you've been following the band since since say hello it's like i think it's i think you're going to be pretty stoked on what like chapter four is and i think it's also a little more lighthearted than things have been uh in a while but like in a in a good way i think I, i'm i'm pretty stoked on how if you're not do sad that. don't write sad music <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. like yeah. we all, all just write what we're feeling at the time yeah. So it's like really like comes from, man. we're we're all in such a different place in our life than where we were when we wrote Baby or Young at the Bend, you know, and like it's completely different now. So it's like really we just it takes us a long time to put out records, but it's because we're trying to take our time and really like express ourselves naturally than just force out some shit, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Of course. So so to finish this one off as we always do we want to say thank you guys for joining us because we really 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 appreciate it and for the final and most important still frame can we get a fuck sea world a fuck sea world Do not deal with it any longer. Yeah, Thank you so yeah. much, guys, and we yeah. love you. Uh, until next time, my friends. Free the whales. <laughs> <laughs>